Ladies and gentlemen, K Kim here. Welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys had a good day trading today. Market is down. As you can see, SP is down about half a percentage negative today. Uh, Nasdaq's down about 1%. I think at one point, Nasdaq was down close to 1.5. We did see a little bit of that bounce towards the end of the, uh, end of the day. Uh, that made it uh, got up a little bit. Semiconductor, I remember it was down about 3% at one point, down 2.5%, down, down a little bit there. Small caps down 1.3%. Banks is down about 0.2%. Energy is pretty much flat there. Transport is down about 1%. Biotech is down about one10 Emerging markets down a little bit. So definitely this is a today was a down day. Uh, you can see every single indices and sectors, they're all negative. And there's some days where you know you will see SP down about half a percentage. And you will see like you know, Russell and the banks are up one percent. We've been kind of in that sort of trend in the last couple months or so, but today it seemed like uh, you know, good down day. Uh, with the everything else uh, red there, some of the sectors getting hit much harder. But some of those sectors are, some of those sectors, like especially semiconductor and the small caps, they've been like, you know what I mean, thriving. So it's no surprise that uh, they, uh, they, they see a harsher pullback today. Grayscale Bitcoin did get hit today, 6.7% negative. And I was talking about Grayscale Bitcoin on um, the last night's uh, weekend analysis video that 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 up gap that need to be filled now that that gap still hasn't filled with this downturn a little bit of concern there gold and silver has held up uh you know better today uh gold silver miners they're uh you know slightly down there oil's up a little bit dollars down a little bit treasury bond is down a little bit vix did obviously got popped with the equities being uh, you know being down today. So let's stick with the S&P spider 65 minute chart here So this is where we closed on Friday. It looks like we saw that gap down Right and that was that first hour second hour Third hour and remember we talked about this level right here right uh, on the weekend analysis that Should there be any kind of downturn coming into this week? What are the levels to watch? We talked about that short-term moving average and the gap barrier. It is no coincidence We slow down there. It is no random occurrence. It is no mistake when we did see that uh, downturn we slow down right on that gap there, and this is obviously that kind of that pivot there, right? This is a prior resistance acting as new support, coinciding with that short-term moving average. So 414, 413 it was the first level of support we talked about on the weekend video, and then this was the um, fourth hour. So we saw a little bit of a green candle there. Some dip buyers showed up and accumulated in that vicinity. And then the fifth hour using that short term moving average as support, kind of reclaiming it back. So we actually briefly lost that short term moving average right there, right? But you can see that gap area was just underneath it to support it up. So with the last two hours, we stayed up above that short term moving average. And that's a good sign that we stayed above the short term moving average rather than below the short term moving. Again, that short term moving average here, right? It would have been micro term more bearish if we would have, like, you know, we close the day below that short term it's a micro term more bullish it favor the buyers because we're staying above that short term moving average let's zoom out and we'll get a better idea where we're at overall so we can kind of get trying to get more information out of this price section from today's move so you can see it was definitely that short term is still, we still have to say that the short term is still showing its strength there with this impressive resume. You can see that we've been following this short term moving average for quite some time now. And this is where we found support. And you can see we also staying above it, right? So, and, and with that, can we say that this is a low that's currently so far as of today, right? We don't know how things are gonna play out this week, but as of today with the data that is hand, we can say that that's still in the vicinity of higher low. So in the short term of things, 
uh, is it a bearish or bullish in the short term trend of things as of today as of this moment with the data that is at hand we want to give what benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the short term and looking at things in more of a micro term we're talking just what happened today right we're not talking about this entire move but just what happened today and with that down gap that was just open earlier today uh, there's a little bit of downside pressure in that so what buyers need to do need to get up and fill this gap as quickly as possible in the case where this thing gets up here and it doesn't fill this gap right let's say we get up here tomorrow sometime next couple days you know it get up here and it fails to fill this gap like it doesn't fill it all the way we we start to fall back down then I think things gonna be a little bit more hectic at that point. So what the buyers wanna do, get up here and fill it, pull back a little bit, because what's gonna happen is when the gap gets filled, it's gonna act as instant resistance, and then maybe use that short term as another you know, bounce point. Obviously the best case scenario for the buyers for the most smooth transition ever, will be getting up here and closing it right underneath it, and the next day gapping it up, turn that into an island bottom. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but that those are the couple scenarios. But let's say we fail, we somehow fail, they're coming back down here. What the bears want to do, you think that this market is up too much, this thing needs to see more severe correction, and you're short in this market or the equities, and you want to see some more red, what you want to see is this gap getting filled. But the best case scenario, obviously, gapping it below it, turning into an island top, right? We haven't seen that in a while. We haven't seen any island tops in a while, so that would just kind of be if you're gonna if you're gonna gamble on that that we're gonna see an island top that will truly be a gamble that will truly be a just throwing a dice up there so I, there will be you know it'll be very low probably we're gonna see that and, and at least as of now we're, we're you know what i'm saying like we're staying above this level and with the momentum that is following or favoring the buyers that will be definitely a gamble to to and sometimes you hit it man sometimes you hit it so if that's your thing you like to gamble away by all means, uh, but let's check out that uh, oscillator. Maybe we we'll extract more information from the oscillator. So I'm gonna kind of zoom into that oscillator here. I want you to see this level here. This is important level, and so you can see we just hanging around right at this level, right? So here's here's for for this to find support here right away, right? For this to find support right or right, right at this level. Because remember, we did see um, last three hours of upturn, but oscillator is is hasn't turned up yet, right? And and this is a good thing about this oscillator because the oscillator is more of a lagging indicator. It it likes to kind of foresee that you know that uh, momentum. So in the micro term, what the oscillator is telling us is that the momentum is still down, right? That's why even though we had three hours of bounce, it hasn't turned up yet because that momentum was already shifted. So, because we're right on this, what I call oscillator support, for this to turn up, what you need to see is a gap up or fast up move, at least first two hours tomorrow. If we see any kind of downturn or even sideways, this thing will start breaking to the downside. And that's what bears want to see because bull bears don't want to see this momentum to continue because we also have higher lows in the oscillator telling us the momentum in the longer term, like short to midterm, it favors the buyers. In the micro term, however, it favors the bears. So bears want to kill this momentum by breaking below. So for this, uh, again, I'm saying this one more time here. If this oscillator get back up tomorrow, needs a gap up, that would be the best case, or big bullish move right off the bat and stay for a couple hours. For two hours or more, it needs to be an update, good update. But if it's a sideways, slightly down or sideways and hang around sideways for a couple hours, this thing's gonna continue lower. And then at that point, they're gonna lose this uh, momentum here, the oscillator momentum there. So. So I've given you, you know, 
different scenarios that you can work with depending on your strategy at this level. Let's see how the market plays out, man. But I, again, overall, you're a long-term trader, you're a position trader, you're a long-term investor, nothing to worry about at this point. You wanna continue to be long as long as this market continues to stick with the overall uptrend, and that's how I'm viewing this market. I'll come back for you. Enjoy your evening. Good luck trading tomorrow.